Hello Year 6. This is only a short story, but it's one of my favourites. Um, the Diary of a Killer Cat by Anne Fine. Chapter 1, Monday. Okay, okay, so hang me. I killed the bird. For pity's sake, I'm a cat. It's practically my job to go creeping round the garden after sweet little eensy weensy birdie pies that can hardly f fly from one hedge to, the, to another. So what am I supposed to do when one of the poor feathery little flutterballs just about throws itself into my mouth? I mean, it practically landed on my paw. It could have hurt me. Okay, okay. So I biffed it. Is that any reason for Ellie to cry in my fur so hard I almost drown? and squeeze me so hard I almost choke. Oh, Tuffy, she says, all sniffles and red eyes and piles of wet tissues. Oh, Tuffy, how could you do that? How could I do that? I'm a cat. How did I know there was going to be such a great giant fuss with Ellie's mother rushing off to fetch sheets of old newspaper and Ellie's father filling a bucket with soapy water? Okay, okay. So maybe I shouldn't have dragged it in and left it on the carpet. And maybe the stains won't come out, ever. So, hang me. Chapter 2, Tuesday. I quite enjoyed the little funeral. I don't think they really wanted me to come. But after all, it's just as much my garden as theirs. In fact, I spend a whole lot more time in it than they do. I'm the only one in the family who uses it properly. Not that they're grateful. You ought to hear them. That cat is ruining my flower beds. There are, un there are hardly any of the petunias left. I'd barely planted any lobelias before it was lying on top of them, squashing them flat. I do wish it wouldn't dig holes in the anemones. Moan, 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 moan. I don't know why they keep bother to keep a cat, since all they ever seem to do is complain. All except Ellie. She was too busy being soppy about the bird. She put it in a box and packed it round with cotton wool and dug a little hole, and then we stood round, to wa round it while she said a few words, wishing the bird luck in heaven. Go away, Ellie's father hissed at me. I find that man quite rude, but I just flicked my tail at him, gave him the blink. Who does he think he is? If I want to watch my little birdie's funeral, I'll watch it. After all, I've known the bird longer than any of them have, and I knew it when it was alive. Chapter 3, Wednesday. So spank me. I brought a dead mouse into the, into the precious house. I didn't even kill it. When I came across it, it was already a goner. Nobody's safe round here. This avenue is ankle deep in rat poison. Fast cars charge up and down at all hours. And I'm not the only cat around here. I don't even think... I don't even know what happened to the, little, to the thing. All I know is I found it. It was already dead. Fresh dead, but dead. And in the time I thought it, and at the time I thought it was a good idea to bring it home. Don't ask me why. I must have been crazy. How did I know that Ellie was going to grab me and give me one of her little talks? Oh, Tuffy, that's the second time this week. I can't bear it. I know you're a cat and it's natural and everything, but please, for my sake, stop. She gazed into my eyes. Will you stop, please? I gave her the blink. Well, I tried, but she wasn't having any. I mean it, Tuffy, she told me. I love you, and I understand how you feel, but you've got to stop doing this, OK? She had me by the paws. What could I say? So I tried to look all sorry, and then she burst into tears all over again, and we had another funeral. This place is turning into fun city. It really is. Chapter 4, Thursday. OK, OK. I'll try and explain about the rabbit. For starters, I don't think anyone's given me enough credit for getting it through the cat flap. That was not easy. I can tell you it took me about an hour to get that rabbit through that little hole. That rabbit was downright fat. It was like a pig rather than a rabbit, if you want my opinion. Not that any of them cared what I thought. They were going mental. It's Thumper, cried Ellie. It's next door's Thumper. Oh, lordy, said Ellie's father. Now we're in trouble. What are we going to do? Ellie's mother stared at me. How could you do that, she asked. I mean, it's not like a tiny bird or a mouse or anything. That rabbit is the same size as Tuffy. They both weigh a ton. Nice, 
Very nice. This is my family, I'll have you know. Well, Ellie's family. But you take my point. And of course, Ellie freaked out. She went berserk. It's horrible, she cried. Horrible. I can't believe that Tuffy would have done that. Thumper's been next door for years and years and years. Sure, Thumper was a friend. I knew him well. She turned on me. Tuffy, this is the end. That poor, poor rabbit. Look at him. And Thumper did look a bit of a mess, I admit it. I mean, most of it was only mud and a few grass stains, I suppose. And there were quite a few bits of twig and stuff stuck in his fur. And he had a streak of oil on one, I one ear. But no one gets dragged the whole way across the garden and through a hedge and over the other garden and through a freshly oiled cat flap and ends up looking like they've just, they've just off to a party. And Thumper didn't care what he looked like. He was dead. The rest of them minded, though. They minded a lot. What are we going to do? Oh, this is dreadful. Poor ne next door will, ne will never speak to us again. We must think of something. And they did. I have to say, it was a brilliant plan by any standards. First, Ellie f Ellie's fe father fetched the bucket again and filled it with warm, soapy water. He gave me a bit of a look as he did this, trying to make me feel guilty for the fact that he'd had to dip his hands in in the fa old fairy liquid twice in a week in one week. I just gave him my old, I am not impressed, stare back. Then Ellie's mother dunked, th dunked Thumper in the bucket and gave him a nice bubbly wash and swill about. The water turned a pretty nasty brown colour, all that mud, and then glared at me as if it was all my fault. They, they tipped it down the sink and began all over again with fresh soap suds. Ellie was snivelling, of course. Do stop that, Ellie, her mother said. It's getting on my nerves. If you want to do something useful, go and fetch the hairdryer. So Ellie trailed upstairs, still bawling her eyes out. I sat on top of the dresser and watched them. They upended poor Fumper and dunked him, up and dunked him in the bucket again. Good job he wasn't his old self. He'd have hated all this washing. And when the water finally ran clear, they pulled him out and drained him. Then they plonked him on the newspaper and gave Ellie the hairdryer. There you go, they said. Fluff him up nicely. Well, she got right on to it, I can tell you. That Ellie could grow up to be a real hot shoot hot shot hairdresser the way she fluffed him up i have to say i never saw thumper look so nice before and he lived next door hutch for years and years and i saw him every day hiya thump i would sort of nod at him as i strolled over the lawn to check out what was left in the feeding bowls further down the avenue hi tough he'd sort of twitch back yes we were good mates we were pals and so it was really nice to see him looking so spruced up and smart when ellie finished with him he looked good. Now what? said Ellie's father. Ellie's mum gave him a look, the sort of look she sometimes gives me, only nicer. Oh no, he said, not me. Oh no, 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 no. It's you or me, she said, and I can't go, can I? Why not? he said. You're smaller than I am, and you can crawl, th crawl through the hedge easier. That's when I realised what they had in mind. But what could I say? What could I do to stop them? To explain? Nothing. I'm just a cat. I sat and watched. To find out what goes wrong when they take Thumper back, I have to listen to tomorrow's story. <laughs>